Thank you, John. How's everybody doing today? So I saw some hands that you said you had been here for, uh, this is the first time in the park. Is everybody from Toronto or uh, somebody told me they're from Richmond Hill? Markham, excellent, excellent. Well, I want to thank everybody for being here today. As John said, uh, I'm Paul Ainsley, I'm the city councilor for the area. I'm also the fill-in while everybody fills out the clipboards before you can go on the tour. <laughs> so uh, first off, I want to thank the friends of the Guild Park and Gardens. I want to thank LEAP for all of their work that they do not this, not just in this community here in Guildwood, but throughout the city of Toronto and the surrounding area. As a bit of background, so I've been the city councilor, as I said, for the past 12 years. One of my goals, uh, when you drove into this park, the main building there uh, was originally opened back in the 1930s by a couple named Rose and Spencer Clark. Uh, they had it up until the early 60s, late 60s, where it turned over to Metropolitan Toronto. It was closed in uh, 2000, 2001 over some property tax issues. Uh, we just recently reopened it uh, last year. It's now a wedding uh, banquet facility. There's some restaurants there. But when I was first elected in 2006, one of my goals, when you went onto this park, you would hardly see anybody on any given day. You could shoot a cannon through it on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon and not hit anybody. So my goal really uh, was to see this park and reinvigorated, to have something happening here each and every month, which we've been very successful on. Uh, one of the, the programs that we've been doing as we've reinvigorated this park. It's 88 acres in size. It's what's referred to as a Carolinian forest. At one time when the Clarks owned this property, uh, they had this 88 acre property. It went all the way to Kingston Road. So at one time, I still have a resident that lives at the end of Guildwood Parkway, that they rode a horse up and down Guildwood Parkway when it was nothing more than a dirt path. So if you flash forward now to 2018, large parts of what you're about to walk through are in what's called in an environmentally sensitive area. We don't like people walking on it or trampsing through it. Uh, I even as a kid rode my bike through this park a lot of times and splashed through the mud. So I'm sure I was riding a bike through an environmentally sensitive area as it's known now, which wouldn't be very popular today. And it doesn't make me happy. So one of the things that we did was we built two boardwalks. One's uh, roughly 175 meters long. It's wide enough that you can get a baby carriage uh, across it both ways. Uh, the one that runs north, sorry, east-west is a little bit shorter. It's a little bit uh, not as wide. We have a couple of spots where you can pass people. We don't allow bike riding on it, but they're both through the very significant environmentally sensitive areas. We've closed some of the pathways off that respect, respect this park. Um, it's part of an, an initiative with the Guild Resource Group which is, uh, has a number of different stakeholders from community groups, uh, friends of the Guild Park and Gardens, the Guildwood Village Community Association. The president is here today with us as well. Uh, but this is all about respecting this park, respecting the natural heritage of it, making sure that it's reinvigorated and maintained. Um, so once again, I want to thank everybody for being here um, and once again, helping me as the city councilor meet one of my goals to promote this much more. Because uh, Scarborough, we have wonderful natural resources here in Scarborough. If you get a chance after, have, have a look at the south end of the park. You can see the Scarborough Bluffs. But I want to thank everybody for being here today as well. And I hope you have a wonderful walk. Thank you very much. Thanks, Paul. Thank you.